the front was a fish sticker. Yay! And I thought, now I, am not, I was not a believer in Jesus Christ at all. I was an atheist, didn't believe any of that stuff. But I saw the fish sticker and I thought, this person will be nice to get a fish sticker. So I knocked on the door and I said, hi, I'm Bill Dodds. I'm here and I'm a real estate agent. And she just said, what's that got to do with me? And just slammed the door right in the face. <laughs> True story. I then had to have the carriage. That was the easy bit. Yeah. It's having the guts to go to the next door. Because yeah. <laughs> <I was, laughs> that's when you really stand up. You know, what a great introduction to a new career. It slammed the door in my face. Yeah. But I knocked on that door because I saw the fish sticker. Because I had in my mind that that person would behave in a certain way according to what they believed. Yeah. And guess what I found? What they believed did not line up with their behaviour. That was my f- introduction to why, to this day, I never have a fish sticker or a Jesus tattoo. I don't have a fish sticker on my car because I don't trust myself when those crazies come through the roundabouts. <laughs> and I don't want them hopping out going, well, you should have give way, man. You got a Christian sticker on your car. I'm just not that good. Get that sticker off your car. Unless you're perfection, you need to stop that sticker. 2 Peter says this. Chapter 1, verse starting at verse 3. There's a fair bit of a word in this. Um, what did we do, Josh? I'll oh, put the whole thing up. Okay, that's great. His divine power has given us everything. Everybody say everything. everything. We need for a godly life through our godly life. That is something that is almost, a godly life is almost something like, well, we can't, we talk about grace, we preach grace, we teach grace, it's all about grace, it's empowering grace. Yes, to do what? To live a godly life. Godliness is a good thing. I wish that woman was a godly woman to line up with the sticker on her car would have made my real estate career a lot easier. Probably toughened me up a bit anyway, so it wasn't so bad, was it? For a godly life, a godly life is a good thing through our knowledge of Jesus Christ, who called us by his power and glory, his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us very great and precious promises. We, do you know it's something that is happening right now in every single one of us? We are here because we believe there's something greater than this life. Yeah. There's a precious promise that says there's more to this one or 70 laps around the sun or 100 laps around the sun. So we're behaving in a certain way because we're believing something, aren't we? And there are precious promises that we will live for eternity with Christ in an amazing new heavens and amazing new earth. So that through them, these precious promises, you may participate in the divine nature. Divine nature is something that has been pressed on my heart more and more. I used to, I still do preach a lot about sharing our faith, but I'm seeing more and more about Christ forming in us ultimately, to be partakers of God's divine nature, ultimately, at the end of the day, to be Christ-like. So you can put a sticker on your car and know everything is well. (laughs) Amen? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world caused by evil desires, have you noticed the world seems to be more and more corrupt? I can't believe that people are actually debating what is a woman. It's just, can, can I just be Bill for a moment? It's so dumb. Yeah. It is so dumb. How dumb can you get? Well, it's more like delusion. The Bible spoke about God says, listen, I'm going to just hand you over to think whatever you want. Yeah. It just doesn't get any more deluded than that. When I see someone in Congress asked, can a man get pregnant? And this is a leader of a, of a Congress in the United States, and she answered yes. What the heck has happened to our world that it is so corrupt and stupidly ridiculous? Can I just say that women have babies? It's pretty obvious. You are not birthing people. You are mothers. You are mums, powerful people of God, created in the image of God. 
I don't want to talk about that because I could preach about that, but I'm not doing that. Next slide. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to, and to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control. I need more self-control. And self-control, perseverance. I'm not praying for that. Um, and to perseverance, godliness. Yeah, I can, I can pray for that. Godliness, mutual affection. Yes, I want to be loving and more loving and more kind and more forgiving. I think we should all want that. Um, and to mutual affection, love. Yes, love is the goal. Love is the command. Love is the ultimate place of becoming more and more like Christ and be part of his divine nature. Amen. Amen. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many of us who seem to get, and I've done this multiple times, I, I expect them, we, we tend to go on our spiritual walk and we hit like a ceiling, like a, something stops us from, maybe there's something in our life and we go, I really want that changed. I really don't want to be like that anymore. And so we get to that point and it's like, okay, I, I don't, we don't want to be ineffective. We don't want to be unproductive but we want to be who Christ has called us to be. Amen. So why are we fasting? I hope that we all... Now, there are people here that really haven't thought about this or it's, not just, it's just not your thing, maybe. Um, I hope we actually want to be like Jesus. The Holy Spirit does this in us. He puts this desire in us, and, but you can quench the Holy Spirit and go, no, thanks. You don't realise you're doing it, but you just stay the same, and that's that. We don't really want to. So I hope we want to be more like his divine nature and effective and productive in our knowledge of him. I hope we all want to stumble less. Don't you hate it when there's just one of those little nagging character traits that you have that pops its little head up and you go, you know what, I've been working on this thing for 20 years and I still do that. All it took was one little comment. All it took was somebody to, to say something and here we go again. It's like, what is wrong with me? And it's not me, it's you. No, I didn't mean to look at you, honey, when I said that. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know it's me. That's the problem. And... Uh, but, you know, that just those things that pop up in our life and we go, why am I still doing this? Why am I still thinking like this? Why am I still behaving like this? When in actual fact those things that we've done or we continue to stumble over have, uh, actually can be major issues and stumbling blocks in our life. I hope we all want to escape the corruption in the world. But here's the deal. There's a war going on in you. It's in you. Yeah. Because when we... You know, okay. We devoted label, liberal, greens, whatever. Ultimately, we belong to the kingdom of God first. Yeah. See, we're sojourners. Yeah? You've already been taken out of those environments and we live in the kingdom of God with a biblical worldview. Josh Carter, Pastor Josh here, told me a statistic that 13% of youth leaders in the United States, I think 13%, have a worldly, a non-biblical world view. Only 13% have a biblical worldview. That's the generation who's going to be in charge in the not too distant future. That's a scary place to be. But there's evil desires that work within us. So we do the things we don't want to do and we don't do the things we do want to do. And there's this war going on in our, in our head. And so we are going into a season of prayer and fasting. And what I'm leading us to this morning is why would you want to pray and why would you want to fast? Why would you want to deny yourself of a pavlova? <laughs> I mean, if you, want to, if, you, if, if you don't like pavlova, it's un-Australian. Know him and become like him. Be like him in his divine nature. What can we do? We deny our flesh and we feed our spirit. Jesus was always teaching his disciples what to believe. Why was he constantly teaching them what to believe? Because he said, you have heard that it was said. And then he says, but I say. And he was trying to transform and uh, bring them into right believing so they could be right with God and walk and be more like 
him. Martha, he says to Martha, 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 do you believe? Jesus also, you know, when he was, he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, do you believe I can do this? And he had to show her that what she believed wasn't in line with the truth. And the truth is he could do this and he can change how we believe today. And when he changes what we believe, it'll change our behaviour. We need to feed our spirit on the word of God. We need to pray. We need to fast, starve the flesh and feed our spirit and it'll change your mind. It'll change your behavior and you will see the divine nature of God made manifest right here at the Rock Church in your life, in your family, in your marriages, in your children, in your grandkids, in your workplaces. You will just see the divine nature of God start to work its way into the world because the world needs help. It is so corrupted and we are the light of the world, amen. We are the salt of the earth. As I'm going down this road, don't think I'm I'm preaching a law. I'm not preaching law. I'm not trying to add to you. You've got to add all these things and if you don't do all these things, well, then you've really mucked it up because the law... Uh, the law was our tutor to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the power of fasting, breaking the strongholds over our lives that created certain types of behaviours. Wouldn't it be not? Is there anybody here would like to change something in their life? Could you please raise your hand? Please raise your hand. Because the ones that don't raise their hand, I, need, I know who to pray for. <laughs> it's true. Don't we need to change who we are to be more like his divine nature? Life is so much easier. You know, he actually said, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. He said, learn from me. It's not meant to be hard. It's so hard. Well, stop it. Help us, Jesus. Help me. Help all of us. A little slide I want to put up. Next one. Oh, go back one. But whoever does these, whoever does not have these is nearsighted and blind. Let's not be that, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. This is what I'm talking about. When you believe that you have been cleansed from your past sins by the blood of Jesus Christ, it will change your behaviour because you think differently. When you don't believe that, it's unfruitful. It's a works-based Christianity because you're not operating the revelation of grace. You're operating in the revelation that uh, Christ is holy and it's like a law over our lives. It's behaviour modification rather than spiritual transformation. Well, that was a good line. You have to write that down. It's like pastoral thing. Cleanse from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, take every effort to confirm your calling and election for you do, if, if you do these things, you will never stumble. I don't want to stumble. We don't want to stumble and we will receive a rich welcome into eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Have you ever turned up to a party and everybody's happy to see you? You've never had that, some of you. Maybe our behaviour needs to change. But when you walk into heaven one day, and you will. Yeah, let's not be those ones that rock into a party and then in the background are going, I didn't know he was coming. Imagine that. Let's not walk into heaven and go, I didn't know, I didn't know that guy would be here. I didn't know that girl would be here. But we're actually meant to walk into there with this rich celebration into an eternal kingdom and into our Lord Jesus Christ. It's meant to be a roar of well done, good and faithful servant. Look what the Lord has done and it is marvellous in our eyes. Praise be to God that there's a rich reward ahead of us. I'm just going to leave that slide up. There's the main scripture, I'm really, I'm quoting scripture all the time this morning, so you won't be able to keep up with that. But that main scripture in 2 Peter, is it 1? Is it 1 Peter or 2? Is it 2 or 1? I blame Josh. <laughs> Meditate on this scripture. Daryl and I were just having a chat about this, weren't we? We, we? we were talking about we need to get a word from God. I've decided to put down the Google searches to see what people's opinions are because I've fallen into the habit of going, this is what I'm preaching on, okay, what's every other preacher on the planet saying about it? Let's check my theology. 
So I just decided to stop that because I never used to do that at all. And now it's just, okay, God, what do you want to preach? I get one word, corruption. That's a great tip, but that one word led to that scripture which led to this entire message. And I believe that the message we're preaching right now is from God. And I have to believe that, behave according to that. And so that scripture... Good job. That's why he's an assistant pastor. <laughs> he fixes all my theology. <laughs> no, he doesn't. That's no I'm kidding. There fixes those things. What was I saying? Sorry. Yeah, main scripture. Take this scripture, read it, meditate it, unpack it. Daryl and I were just talking about it. There's so much in it. It's talking about a divine nature. It's talking about adding to your faith. It's talking about perseverance. It's talking about walking into the rich kingdom that God has ready and prepared for us. It, it pretty much sets us up for a transformed divine nature in Christ if we just meditate on that, chew it over, look up all the references that go with it. I don't need to give you 20 scriptures this morning. It's like don't sit here and seek the Lord just through the preacher. Go and seek the Lord for yourself. Prayer and fasting will do that in your life. Pray to the Lord fast. Deny the flesh. Start to feed your spirit. Amen? Next slide. When we do those things, change what you believe. Oh, when we change what we believe, it changes our behaviour and we are more like his divine nature. I'm just going to leave that up. I have, a, I have a nice new car out there, it's, um, and I've been driving for 40 years. And when I hop in this car, it's like hopping in an aeroplane for me. And so I have to go through pre-driving checks. Yes. And the pre-driving che- checks are turn off the stop-start button, because yep. I don't want you stopping when I stop. I don't like it when the car stops then I don't like the warning because it's told me I've veered to the left or veered to the right. I don't like it when it flashes because I've come up to the car in front too closely. I don't like it that some so-called amazing engineer decided that everybody wants to have the radio switch on every time they hop in the car. I don't want the radio switched on every time I hop in the car. (laughs) And, And it's like, you can't turn these things off once. I have to turn these things every time I hop in the car. It's like, beep. Bip, 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 bip. I'm like, my goodness, can I just drive the car? (laughs) I don't like it telling me what to do. It's not smarter than me. It's just a machine. I've been driving for 40 years. I didn't have any of that stuff. And so what I found is that when I hop out of bed or when we hop out of the bed in the morning, there's not just things we need to do. There's something we need to do. We need to switch off certain things they try to control our behaviour. And it's, it's like it's there every morning, every day. What's that, what's that thing? Lord, help. What's that prayer, that joke? And, you know, the guy prays that great prayer. Lord, help me to, Lord, it's going to be a blessed day, a joyful day. And Lord, help me because I'm about to get out of bed. <laughs> you know, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to read my Bible today and all those things. And then we hop out of bed and then suddenly it's like, yeah. But so the... the I have to turn off the control, all these things every time, and um, anti-collision. It's like every, every day we need to turn these things off that want to control us. And so all I'm actually doing is denying it the power by switching off a button. When we fast, it's like we deny our flesh the power to control us. It, it is. It, it might not happen straight away, but there's something in this. And um, I'm, I'm encouraging all of us to be part of our 21-day Prayer and fasting. Now, you may fast one meal, you may fast for 10 days, like I don't know what Edwin will do, but she, she seems to fast. And then I say, well, she just doesn't, I say, Are you eating today? And she goes, I haven't eaten anything for a week. And I'm like, my gosh, I'm, I'm excited if I can make it through the day. <laughs> and so feed those things that build our spirit because we want to walk by our spirit and not by our flesh. Jesus said the flesh profits nothing. 
So why would we give it so much control of our lives if it's not profitable, if it's not producing the fruit that we're, we're looking for? And let's feed our spirit. Here's another problem. The devil wants to control us. Has anyone noticed that? He would like, it's called temptation. Can I say this? Temptation is not sin, but he does tempt us a lot. When you walk by your spirit, you will not fall to those things. They won't have control over you. This is the power of fasting. It breaks control over our old habits. Our old self wants control us. The world wants to control us through social media, through wokeness, through freedom of speech, through, you know, is a, what defines a woman. It's ridiculous. And so, but we are partakers of Christ's divine nature. Everybody say that. I'm a partaker of Christ's divine nature. If you went into one of our courses, um, things you may not know here, we do courses here. There's First Steps. We all have, so have Born for More. We also have a Bible college. I would recommend if, uh, that those things are powerful in transforming what we believe and change how we behave. We've seen the fruit of that. It's happening. And one of the things that Daryl will mention in, in Born for More, and it stuck with me ever since he said it. I knew it to be true, but it's it, it just one of those things that stuck with me. And he said, it's your spirit that got born again. It's your spirit that inherits the kingdom of God. Your spirit. The flesh isn't going there. The flesh does not inherit the kingdom of God. Your spirit, the real you, the blameless, holy, before God, spirit of God, cleansed and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you get that and you believe that, it starts to change how you behave. Simple example. Um, well, we are a spirit being living in a body. Peter spoke like this. He said, Jesus showed him how to put off. He referred to it as a tent, living in a tent. Yeah, move into, a, yeah, move into something better than a tent. That would be good. And um, Carol, who's heard of Dr. Caroline Leaf? Dr. Caroline Leaf 30 years ago proved that our mind is separate from our physical brain. The scientific world of the time said that can't be true. It's impossible. Now they all believe that to be true, that our mind is not our brain. You can be renewed in your mind and what your mind meditates on actually changes the neurological patterns of your brain. So what you're feeding on now is creating a physical change in your brain. Yeah. I've got to stop saying you because I mean we. Yeah. What you meditate on changes our physical brain, literally. If you keep feeding on that stuff, you will go weird. Don't be weird. You're a partaker of Christ's divine nature. Meditate on good things. I love it when I walk past our house and we have flowers out the front and uh, I just smell the flowers and watch the bees get drunk on pollen. It's so funny how they roll around. So turn off the power of the flesh that tries to control us so that our natural reactions are in line with his divine nature. That girl that I knocked on the door, that, is a not a, a, that was a horrible thing to do, to slam a door on something. Even if they were just, I mean, I could have been a, maybe she thought I was a Jehovah's Witness or something. I don't know. Scriptures, Lord, the Word of God. So, we are entering into this prayer and fasting, and, and in a moment, not yet Brenda, Brenda's going to hop up, and we're just going to unpack some things that we want to do as a church. We want to get together as a church, and I want you to be part of what we're doing as a church. All of our connect group leaders, please be part of what we're doing as a church. We're starting off tonight with a worship night. Invite everybody. Think of how many people here have... You know, invite the people you know. Just tell everybody, hey, we have a worship night. Can we do that? Can we do that, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen God move in such, such just wild ways. And, and I go, I never thought that guy would come to Jesus like that. Or that girl would come to Jesus like that. But let's just trust the Lord. Let's seek him, put him first. Let's have a worship night tonight, starting at 6.30 tonight. And let's all get together, all connect group leaders. Yes, we really, as, as, as the pastor here, I'd really 
my desire is that you would be here tonight. My desire is that you'd bring, connect people tonight and that we would all get together and we'd have a great night in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. I mean, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a powerful night. Then we're leading into prayer and fasting for three weeks. And uh, we're, we're lining up more. Brenda's going to bring all the dates in a moment. So, I once went through a, um, I was 18 years old, I'm driving my car, and two cars ahead of me went to turn right, and the one that went to turn right, he, 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 he just went, he, he went straight, so his blinkers on to turn right, we're in the right hand lane, and it's three lanes wide, and it's full on traffic, and the guy, two cars up, he puts his blinker on, I see him hit the brakes, and I see him just go sliding sideways through the green light. And I just thought, that is so funny, that guy can't drive. <laughs> I mean, that's so stupid. Look at that, look at that guy. How hopeless can you get? And the car in front of me, he had his blinker on, and he went to turn right, and he went straight through as well. So I laughed at him too. I thought, that's hilarious. Well, who do you reckon was next? So I got my green look. Light, and I've got my blinker on. Next thing you know, I'm sideways. And all three cars just slid right out, right across, blocked up all, you know, all the traffic lights, everything. We just all slid out. I thought it was so funny. The truth is, we were all out of control. It, it, it was beyond our circumstances. Sometimes you're born into something that's beyond your circumstance. But we can't stay out of control forever. We can't live in a place that's out of control. We're actually meant to be living by the Spirit of God and get self control. 98% of car accidents are going to disappear because we're going to go fully autonomous. Do we, some people, who wants to do that? Not many. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to total autonomy in cars because it means I don't have to worry about drink drivers, drug people. I don't have to worry about people that shouldn't be driving their cars anymore. It means I can hop in the car, go to sleep and wake up at Yamba. I don't want to drive a car. I'm overdriving cars. It's like it's just something I have to do or we have to do. And so fully autonomous is safer. Wouldn't it be great if our spirit was more autonomous and naturally walked by the spirit and we had 98% less issues in our lives? Wouldn't that be awesome if we could do that? Prayer and fasting can break off those things in our life and we can walk by our spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we get things in our lives that are continually out of control. Is anxiety out of control in our lives? Is anger out of control? So we react from the wrong way. Is lust out of control in our lives? We live in a very permicuous, per, permicuous, what is it? Give me the word. Permis, give me it again. Promiscuous. Is worry out of control? Worry won't change your behaviour. It just makes you worry. It doesn't make you any more money. It doesn't make you healthier. It doesn't do anything. You just worry. Jesus said that. The less you worry, the life is easier. Is eating habits out of our control? No, it's not. What is it in our lives that we need to get a grip on so we're not out of control and we give God glory and partake of his divine nature. And how do we get a grip on God? How do we do that? How do we get a grip on the things of God and be godly people in an ungodly, corrupted world that we would go through this life and shine for Jesus Christ, that we would be able to pray for people, see him totally healed, that we would see pe people who were uh, with addiction. I've I got, I got a brother, brother in Christ here who was set free in an instant from alcohol, bang, like that. And he hasn't had any since. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of God. Not out of control anymore. The Spirit is stronger than our flesh. If we just realise that, we've just got to turn the flesh off a bit. And then we'll start walking by our Spirit. And life will be fun again. Fun again. Amen. Start your flesh, feed your spirit. I'm going to call up Brenda because what are we going to do, Brenda? You've got some dates for us. You've got some things happening for us.